Welcome to another in a series of lectures given on the campus of Iowa State University in Ames. Today, Mrs. Don Westlake, consultant at the Institute for Educational Research in Chicago, speaks on the topic, Sex Education in the High School. And Dr. Claire Maple, director of the Computation Center and chief of Mathematics and Computer Science Division of the Ames Laboratory at Iowa State, discusses the problem of computer privacy. First, Dr. Maple. And uh, I want to talk to you this afternoon a little bit about the privacy problem um, and the computer age. Probably some of you may have noticed last night in the Des Moines uh, Tribune there was an editorial on this particular problem. Uh, and if you've been reading the papers very carefully lately, you will have seen a lot of information on uh, uh, credit bureau. Uh, data files. Uh, much information has been said recently in the public press about privacy and an individual's uh, right to privacy. And a considerable concern about this subject has been generated uh, by uh, government officials, uh, professionals, and individual citizens. Uh, the invasion of privacy uh, by technological means uh, can be traced back at least a hundred years to the invention of a telegraph and a telephone. Uh, the invention of the microphone uh, has made eavesdropping much easier, uh, and the development of highly sophisticated, uh, micro-miniaturized, uh, ingenious electronic devices and their accompanying easy ease of hiding them uh, presents a serious threat to individual privacy and has caused Congress and other responsible government uh, bodies to consider some need for federal and state legislation in this area. With the development of the digital computer, which has taken place within the last 25 years, the threat to both individual and corporate privacy has taken on even larger proportions. The ability of a computer to store and retrieve tremendous amounts of information poses new threats to the individual's rights to privacy. This is the area I'd like to address my remarks to this afternoon. <clears throat> As each of us progress through life, we leave a trail of records which are generally widely dispersed and generally inaccessible to anyone unless he is willing to spend a considerable amount of money and effort gathering the pieces together. Most of us start with a birth certificate, which is duly registered in the county courthouse, and uh, uh, the hospital keeps a record of our birth, and our pediatrician, uh, our family doctor, keeps a health record for us during our early age. Uh, for a couple of decades, we're probably not much more than a uh, deduction on our parents' income tax, but then during that period, we enter school, and schools are notorious in the records they keep uh, in the way of recording our scholastic accomplishments, our attendance, our IQ tests, our personality profiles in voluminous detail. With automation of, uh, of academic record keeping, and the use of computers and educational processes itself, we may expect more and better records to, in, keep, in all levels of education. Uh, quite frequently, when a, an individual reaches a high school age, he may want to work during his uh, vacations or summer uh, holidays, so he will apply for a social security number and begins a long history of accumulation of his employment. Uh, record, which will follow him through the rest of his life. When we reach the age 18, many of us will either uh, start accumulating a military record or at least a selective uh, uh, service record, and about that same time we'll probably apply for a driver's license, and if we're lucky, uh, we'll avoid arrest and any jail uh, records. Most of us will apply for a, a marriage license and a good portion of us will collect uh, uh, divorce decrees, 
which will end up in voluminous charts or uh, records in the courts. If we move around, as many of us are apt to do in, in our mobile uh, economy today, uh, even the airplane uh, keeps a record of where we go, and the hotels keep records of where we stay. Uh, even the telephone companies make a record of our long distance calls. So you see there is a large number of facts that are accumulated in, at present, a uh, rather haphazard fashion, but which, uh, if properly manipulated, could tell considerable about uh, a gi given individual. Now, I do not mean to imply uh, that all this record keeping does not have some usefulness. Uh, uh, record keeping is a mark of a uh, highly developed economy. And indeed, uh, it's been said that uh, life as we know it today could not exist without the record keeping that goes on. Government and business have been uh, a prime area of development of large computer file systems in which much of the clerical routine has been transferred uh, to the computer with uh, human interrogation of the system. Uh, Perhaps the tremendous growth of this record keeping has actually influenced the direction of development of our economy more than we realize at the present time. A typical example of the type of thing I'm thinking about is the airline reservation system in which it's possible for us to here in Ames get a reservation to carrying us from Chicago to New York and get a confirmation on that reservation in a matter of a few minutes. Another good example of a time-shared file system of this general nature is that used by the credit bureaus. Uh, several credit bureaus, which you may have read about in uh, recent uh, newspaper articles, have linked their individual files together so it is possible for an individual living in Ames to go to San Francisco and establish a credit rating in that city very easily. Uh, indeed, I'm told by a friend on a recent uh, visit to Honolulu that his credit card was one means of getting hotel reservations. He told me that money was not enough. Uh, even though he was willing to pay uh, his hotel bill in advance, uh, he could not necessarily get a room. Apparently what's happening there is that the hotels in Hawaii are using the credit rating of an individual uh, in an attempt to, uh, to control access to their property of, property of uh, unwanted uh, guests. Uh, they uh, are able to query the credit system uh, quickly enough uh, so that by the time they get through the usual procedures of registration at a hotel desk, if they decide that this is an unsavory individual, they can say, sorry, no vacancy. Uh, also today, we see uh, time-shared uh, file systems in use for uh, purpose of keeping records in the insurance business, for checking automobile tags, for credit investigations, for census uh, information, and many other uses. Uh, generally, these systems, uh, at least currently, offer no social problems uh, because the information handled is not very sensitive and access to it is generally limited. But you can see here the beginning of a creation of a more comprehensive uh, system. One of the questions that occurs uh, when you think about a data system like this is why are so many records necessary? Uh, clearly, we don't create records just for the sake of creating records, although it may seem like we do at times. Uh, but rather, there is an implicit assumption behind this that sometime these records are going to prove useful to us. Uh, as an illustration, uh, for example, an auditor might be required by law to audit certain books of a given company, or the Internal Revenue Service uh, is required to law, by law to investigate income tax uh, uh, turns of all of us, and quite often this means looking into the uh, business of the associates of a given individual to verify that the financial transactions of that individual are, in fact, as represented in his uh, return. The personnel department of a 
may want rapid access to personnel files in order to, to determine whether or not to give a, an individual a good letter of recommendation or possibly they have an opening for uh, a new job which requires a certain type of individual and they wish to seek such individual among their own ranks. A doctor might find it desirable to have an entire medical history of an individual, uh, say a new patient, in order to better prescribe uh, uh, medicine for him. Or the, vet the Veterans Administration, for example, uh, may wish to examine a veteran's uh, complete military and medical record in order to determine whether an ailment uh, claimed to be service-connected is, in fact, uh, so connected. Uh, certain government agencies and the military services uh, have extremely sensitive positions to fill uh, if they can find the appropriate type of individual. Now they go about this usually by a personal history background investigation, usually done by a lot of legwork on the part of government investigators. Uh, in fact, a lot of this information which these investigators dig out is already available in some file if you had access to it. Uh, suppose we wanted to gather information today on some individual for perfectly legitimate purposes. Uh, information has the habit of becoming outdated, uh, hard to locate, generally isn't very readily avail available. If one went through direct channels and asked most sources for the records about an individual, he would most likely be unsuccessful, if for no other reason than the information is not available cheaply. Even if it is a public record, the investigator usually spends long hours and large amount of effort trying to uncover the pertinent information. Uh, the price is usually prohibitive in following this procedure, except in all but the extreme cases. It has been suggested that a widespread information and computing service could provi provide an effective handle on this information. If such a service were widespread, uh, information could be acquired and digested in real time and automatically be recorded within the mass memory of the computer system. This could make inventories, bank balances, abstracts, and so forth available as needed. These same data could also be the raw information required for important uh, statistical studies. Once the raw data is automatically available in a computer system, programs could be developed to answer well-defined queries, even, even those not specifically envisioned in the designer of the original system. Now, the very power of some of these advanced computer systems make them a serious threat to the privacy of an individual. If every significant action is recorded in the computer and programs are available for analyzing them, then the daily activities of the individual uh, may be open for scrutiny. This is technically feasible today in any community. Uh, now suppose that we take a few of these large remote access computer systems and join them together by communications lines. Then we have a composite information base that could be so large and so readily accessible that it would perhaps uh, permit unscrupulous uh, individuals to use this information for unlawful purposes. And uh, modern organized crime can be expected to have the financial resources and ability to acquire the requisite skills uh, to be able to misuse this information in some of the systems which are now being considered. Uh, while uh, there are technical means now available for preventing illegal searches, uh, where will society draw the line between what is legal and what is illegal? Will the custodians of the system be able to re resist the pressure from government agencies special interest groups, and powerful individuals. What about the custodians themselves? Can a society trust this, uh, any individual with this much power? 
we should be concerned about not only what is legal and illegal use of such a system, uh, but because uh, humans are usually making decisions on totally inadequate information and are prone to jump to conclusions when they are presented with a fairly thin chain of inferred relationships, <clears throat> what appears to be legal use of the system may in fact have uh, blackmail as, it all, as its ultimate goal. Hence there may develop uh, sort of technical private detectives whose main occupation is to gather illegal information for illegal purposes. Now, in order to proceed toward a solution of this problem, I think it's important that we examine the environment in which a, such a system might exist. We should not assume that everyone is as honest as we are, but they're just as diabolically clever. Uh, and that some of the persons in the controlling agency uh, may be overzealous and opportunistic in their attitude toward their work. Furthermore, in the past, we have seen the development of government agencies, which were very fine agencies to begin with, based on their original personnel. But as the agency aged, the personnel turnover uh, was such that the new personnel was drawn from the gover governing uh, uh, area, and consequently there's a de deterioration in the type of uh, activity that uh, agency carries on. I think it's important that safeguards be built into the system during the design stage rather than being put on like a patchwork after the system is, is in existence. Uh, it's clear that this will add to the cost of the system and this should be considered as a necessary cost and a price to uh, society for the privilege of building. Uh, what may be a potentially dangerous system. Let me cite as an example the type of thing I have in mind here. When the telephone system was designed, there was no thought about uh, being able to trace calls. And technically that could have been done very easily, but it was not done. Now it's almost prohibitive to go back and equip every telephone with a little button you could push which would record the source of, of the origination of that call. Uh, this idea, of course, of uh, protective devices is not a new concept at all, and we have been practicing uh, uh, this type of thing in uh, such instances as electrical distribution systems, uh, uh, sewage collection systems, and so forth. Of course, uh, it may have taken a serious epidemic to force the building of a local uh, sewage disposal plant or possibly a serious fire to get electrical codes on the book. But it may be too late uh, to build privacy safeguards into a data collection system if we wait until all the needs are clearly defined. Furthermore, if we wait that long, we might not be too happy with the protection system so developed. I think we should not expect too much in the way of protection from a legal profession uh, in lieu of good design. Laws by themselves have been very ineffective in protecting our privacy from the rapid growth of widespread electronic eavesdropping, uh, wiretapping, nuisance uh, sales calls on telephones, uh, crank calls, bomb calls, uh, uh, all uh, nuisance calls of that type are still uh, very much in the news. About the only thing that has happened here is that these laws have accomplished the fact that the police generally cannot use these same techniques in their law enforcement that are readily available to the criminal. Furthermore, uh, legal safeguards would not prevent an uh, overzealous bureaucrat or an autocratic uh, government from using a national data bank to persecute or prosecute uh, its detractors. However, uh, appropriate laws can be helpful uh, in the sense that outlawing certain practices may have the effect of increasing the price of the act so it's no longer an attractive economic enterprise for the violator. 
It's also possible that laws could be written so as to prevent the construction of a potentially weak system to begin with. I would like to now take a few minutes to discuss some of the things that could be done to protect individual privacy and still make it possible for the government to have the beneficial uh, information that could be obtained from a national data bank. First, it seems to me that it might be possible to develop new ways of classifying information uh, to be able to readily identify that which is private and non-circulating, that which is confidential and, is, and of limited circulation, and that which is public and freely circulating. In a sense, we have a distinction uh, today between the facts that, uh, about ourselves which are intimate and those which are part of the general living process, our education, employment, family records, and so forth, and then those which are public records. In any attempt to uh, develop a new uh, way of classifying information, there are several factors that should be taken into account. The selection of a fact to be included uh, in such a system must, in, uh, must involve evaluation by the mere, mere act of being selected. Uh, what to record, what language is, is used, and what other facts is associated with it uh, is, in fact, a selective process. This, in some sense, uh, reflects the relation of an individual to society and uh, has the important influence on decision makers who consider that they are making logical decisions uh, based on rather uh, logical uh, premises rather than hunches. Uh, furthermore, the facts recorded on a given individual in some sense reflect uh, his estimate of himself. It probably should also be realized that uh, new information systems are probably going to create new institutions. Uh, currently, we establish credit uh, through a, lake, a local uh, rating agency, but it's highly probable that in the future that this will give way to a central financial utility in which each person will have a single account that handles all of his financial transactions of every kind. Now, once it's been decided that it is feasible to have a new information system, uh, we then reach a stage at which uh, planning and development can take place. But even though in a carefully designed system, machines can be made to do much to protect privacy, man can also defeat the most carefully designed systems. However, there are certain characteristics that could be built into the system to at least make it more expensive for the unauthorized uh, to take advantage of it. The system design aspects I'll divide into three stages, uh, input, storage, and output. Uh, in the input stage, uh, there should be provision for uh, cryptographic protection of all communication uh, lines that carry potentially embarrassing data. Possibly some type of magnetic shielding would be appropriate at critical points in this transmission network. There should be a control on who is permitted to enter data into the data banks uh, and what kind of data would be acceptable for entry. Uh, perhaps uh, it would be possible to, for the machines to reject automatically certain types of tainted information such as grand jury inquiries, uh, personality test results, sexual records, and so forth, and to attach some type of sensitivity code to each block of information, classifying it ranging from public information to top sensitive. The uh, primary source of any information uh, could be maintained with that information for the possible backtracking in the future uh, in case there's a question of the validity of the information. In the storage phase, <coughs> information should not be stored in plain text form uh, just to protect it from uh, 
uh, system dumps because it's quite common to just dump the entire memory of a computer out uh, on the paper. And if that is in plain language rather than encrypted form, then this leaves it open for a rather wide dissemination, which seems to me to be unwise at that stage. There should also be random audits of uh, password security codes and the uh, creation of a program in the computer to reject attempts to convert statistical information into intelligence information. Uh, as all of you are well aware, by appropriate choice of your parameters in certain statistical studies, you can narrow the information down so you're really talking about just a given individual rather than a stati statistical sample. It would be a relatively uh, simple means to, uh, or simple task to provide mechanisms to detect abnormal information requests. Uh, if a given file is receiving an excess number of inquiries, uh, or if there is an unusual number of cross-references to a particular source, then those requests could be flagged and referred to a human operator. There should also be locks to prevent the uh, obtaining of information without the appropriate uh, password for that type of information. The type of thing I have in mind here is a two or three uh, combination password quite similar in concept to the idea used in the safety deposit box at the bank. It takes two keys to open the box. And uh, similarly, it could take two passwords to get access to information. Or if it was uh, ultra sensitive, it possibly it would take more than, than uh, two passwords uh, to all be on the correct combination in order that uh, the information be uh, freed for uh, the uh, inquiry. I think it's important that information in the computer be coupled so it would be impossible to get printout uh, of one block of information without getting uh, the other part to protect the rights of individuals. For example, in a law enforcement system, uh, it should be impossible to obtain the arrest records Without, without actually getting the results as to conviction or dismissal. Uh, furthermore, in uh, government security files, uh, allegations of disloyalty should be accompanied by the <coughs> individual's uh, uh, replies. Uh, in spite of uh, all possible safeguards that we could think of to build into the system, the system could still be corrupted from within or penetrated from without by a concentrated effort. <clears throat> to help minimize this type of danger, certain legal changes uh, could be uh, desirable. Uh, for example, personal information could be defined as private property with all the restraints on interference by the public or private authorities. This would make all the due process guarantees that our law, laws have already devised available for protection of uh, individual privacy of information. This would also provide protection for the individual to have due process of law before his property, the information, uh, could be taken and misused by a government or some large private uh, uh, agency. Allowing for certain uh, exceptions, such as national security, or the actual separation of individual identity uh, from information for statistical purposes, uh, an in individual uh, would have to be notified when information was added to his central file. He would have the opportunity to examine this new information and to challenge its accuracy, if appropriate, and to submit a reply that would be coupled permanently to that information. Such a right of review by the individual could have a profound effect on the information system itself. When the information keeper knows that the individual will be notified, can see and challenge the information, all the restraints of visibility of action would be on the keeper. Finally, I'd like to suggest that uh, there should be an independent regulatory agencies whose function is to protect and defend the 
privacy rights of individual citizens, sort of an ombudsman. Uh, remedies for improper use of the information system could include the usual criminal penalties, damage, damage actions and injunctions, uh, details of which could be adapted to the peculiarities of this particular situation. One of the sanctions which should be included is to exclude any person or agency found in violation of use of the information system uh, from, on a partial basis or a short term or a permanent basis, depending upon the seriousness of the offense. It's my opinion that there's no way to stop the computerization of information. If the task we are faced with is to be uh, accomplished, we want to make sure that such systems are properly constructed so it's possible to control them. Sort of analogous to stopping the flow of a river to the sea. You really can't stop it, but you might be able to channel it. Thank you. That was Dr. Claire Maple, professor of mathematics and computer science at Iowa State, speaking on the problem of computer privacy.